Welcome to LSC, it's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Today we're coming to you from location at the NASCAR Sports Grill in the power plant in Hampton. And this is the Mike Tomlin tailgate uh, gridiron greats. I have with me Michelle Sawalski, who happens to be the gal behind the scenes. And I just found out grew up in the uh, Pittsburgh area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about growing up in Pittsburgh. What was that like? Oh, I loved it. It's the best place to be. And, of course, we have the best football team ever. <laughs> and true, true-blooded Stiller fan. <laughs> All right, but then you went to college for a, a great college for football. Yes, I did. Penn State University. They, they call that the uh, linebacker you over there. There you go. That's um, right. Tell me a little bit about this program, because you've been working with Carl and Vernon for, what, four years, four years. now? Mm -hmm. Tell me what your duties are. Um, actually, I'm the event coordinator, so I, you know, handle all the events with the Tomlin tailgate. So, you know, selling the tickets and getting the venue and all that good stuff and getting all the fans in here and... So, are you on the computer a lot? You get you have somebody to help you? Um, yeah, we have a big team, so it's a good thing, but... You know, yeah, I'm on the computer a lot, talking to people, which is what I like to do because I'm a sales manager, so, right. you know. <laughs> so, uh, how did you get involved? Who first approached you to do this? I actually moved to Virginia four years ago because my husband's in the military, and my first event was actually the tailgate, and that's when I met up with them, and being from Pittsburgh, I was like, Mike Tomlin, and I was so excited, and all the football players, so, and then we got to be really good friends, Carl Vernon and I and we just started working together, and they know what a diehard football fan I am. So I just, you know, it's something I love to do, and my well, whole heart's in it. Well, you know, it's, it's good to see the passion coming from you for football, because you oh, don't yeah. see that from very many <laughs> good-looking ladies. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, as you work with those guys, do you find that each year it gets just a little bit better because you're a little more organized, or how does that work that way? Oh, yeah, yeah, and we're building a really great relationship, and it's such a good thing for the kids at the 757, you know, to get them involved right. in the football and get them out there, whereas they may not be able to do that, you know, at another time. So it's a great thing, and, yeah, it does get easier. <laughs> oh, that, that's always good to know. I, I know you got a daughter over at Bethel High School. Tell me a little bit about her. Um, my daughter, Chelsea, actually just graduated from Bethel, and my daughter, Bree, will be a sophomore, and she's a varsity cheerleader for Bethel, so she's into the football game as well. <laughs> so we'll be able to get the camera on her when we do the telecast. There you go, yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking time. I know you're busy running around seeing everybody. Thank you for coming in and, well, and talking Well, thank you so much. Us. I appreciate it. All right, stay tuned for our next guest. Welcome back. I have David Teal with me, the uh, one of the sports writers for the Daily Press. I appreciate you stopping by and talking to me. You're one of a dying breed. This, this <laughs> written print is, is, is kind of losing its glamour, although I love the paper. Well, I, and I do too. I grew up ho holding it over the breakfast table every morning. But you know, now we're an internet product too. We're online with blogs and hrvarsity.com and dailypress.com. We're on Twitter. It's, it's not just a print product anymore. They keep us hopping now. Uh, tell me a little bit, because you've been care covering sports quite a while on the peninsula. How long? 27 years. I came here in 1984, graduated from James Madison in 1981, and three years later I was here. All right, and tell me some of the, the athletes that you remember coming through, because you have covered a lot of good athletes from the what they call the 757 area. Well, absolutely, and, and to me, the, the, the signature athlete will still always be Ronald Kerr. <laughs> I mean, he was he was just in a, in a class of his own as a football player. He was beyond exceptional as a basketball player and good enough to go to North Carolina in that sport. Uh, you know, obviously, Allen Iverson isn't that far behind, but Ronald, what he did at Hampton uh, with, with the winning streak and the three consecutive state championships in football and the state championship in basketball, to me is unsurpassed. Now, there are people who were here before I was who, gosh, go back to Leroy Keyes in that era. Right. But Ronald, 
to me, will, will always be the iconic figure. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of people ask me who was the best one I saw, and I said, if you just talk about high school, there's nobody can surpass Ronald Curry. No, and, and, and he d did not have the college and professional career that perhaps a lot of people might envision. That was kind of a two-fold thing. He was a two-sport guy at North Carolina instead of focusing on one. Then he tore his Achilles playing football yeah. there. And I, I think a lot of us believe that had Ronald just focused on football, that the sky was the limit. But yet he was still good enough to go to the NFL, yeah. switch positions, and be a very good wide receiver for the Oakland Raiders. Well, let's tell you what kind of athlete he was. Now, as you were covering sports, did you just cover football and basketball, or did you cover them all? No, I was I, I was part of our coverage teams on, on, on most any event, the professional golf tournaments that came through town. In 1996, I spent three weeks in Atlanta doing the Olympics, which, which was a thrill for me. I tried to get to as many venues from ping pong to team handball to gymnastics to softball to baseball to tennis anything I could get to because I, I knew it would probably be the only Olympics I'd ever cover. <laughs> so I basically stayed up 24 hours a day and just went to every venue I could right. find. But what do you, how do you figure that we get so many good athletes from this area that go and excel, not only in, in, the, in the college, but in, on into the pros? Well, and, and it's astonishing, you know, this summer, the Peninsula will see its fourth Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee when Chris Hamburger goes in. Right. He'll join Lawrence Taylor and Henry Jordan and Dwight Stevenson. And it's just, and that's just from the Peninsula. That's not counting the South Side where you've got Bruce Smith and, and Lewis Creekmore. And, and that's just the, the Pro Football right. Hall of Fame. It, it truly is astonishing. You know, we joke, is it the water? What is it? But I think there is a culture here. Of, uh, of coaches and youth sports. It's valued here. Uh, Carl Francis's camp, which is what this event here tonight is all about. People come back here, they give back to the community, and, and it's all about, about paying it forward. And, and, and people remember their roots and they return, and I think that's part of the greatness here. Yeah, I, and I give just one real quick story about that. Milan Brown coaching up there. Holy Cross, right. he said he got tickets from a guy from this area, did not know him, to go to a Boston uh, Red Sox ball game. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and the lines in the game, and we've got so many coaches now. Yeah. T.J. Abraham is, is now the, the, the head women's basketball coach out at Radford and, and Milan up at Holy Cross and previously at Mount St. Mary's. And so many people doing well in the coaching ranks too. Yeah. I appreciate you taking time to stop by. My pleasure. All right, stay tuned for our next guest. Welcome back. I have Gerard Mayo with me, who is a linebacker for the New England Patriots. Welcome, glad to have you. Hey, glad to be here. I know you're back here for the camp and everything, but let's talk a little bit about you growing up. I knew you grew up in the Hampton area. You played rec ball. Do you remember who your coaches were in the rec ball? Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Coach Chapman down there at Woodland Wildcats, man. Had a great time out there. I've been playing football here a long time. So. Now, did you did you get a, have a passion at the beginning for it, or did you, did you have your eye on other sports? Was football always your thing? You know, I played all, I played uh, basketball, football, baseball, and soccer growing up. Then uh, football just kind of came natural to me. Everybody started growing taller, and I started I started growing thicker. So right. football is my sport. Now, in, in, in football, you always been a uh, a, a hitter. Is that what you always like to do? I've always liked hitting, even when I played running back. You know, people who saw me play here growing up, they knew I played running back. So I played running back like I did the linebacker position. So right. I like hitting. All right, and then you went to Kickatan, had a good good career over Kickatan. Talk about some of those coaches you had. Yeah, you know, Coach Austin, Coach Thompson, Coach Thomas, those guys, you know, really made an impact on my life, not only as being a football player, but as far as being a man in general. So. I owe a lot to those guys. Well, yeah, and see, that's what I'm trying to get across to people, that you don't just get from a coach how to play sports, but you how to get along in life, exactly. how to become a better individual. Exactly. And, you know, I, I can't I can't sit here and tell you all the things they, you know, they taught me these lessons in right. life and things like that, but they made an impact on my life and uh, helped me be where I am today. 
All right, before we go on to your college, you have some brothers that also came through the Kickatan system. Yep. Talk a little, just to mention your brothers for me. Yeah, my older brother, Shemai, he came through. He was the first one to come through. And then my two younger brothers, Deron and Derek Mayo, all of us played linebacker, all of us played for Kickatan High School, so it was a good time. Yeah, it was like there's Mayos all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Mayos all over, man. <laughs> all right, then, then you, you graduate from Kickatan. And you go on to college. Yep. Talk about Tennessee. You're going down there, Nyland Stadium, right. huge stadium, many, many people. You walk out on that field, what was that like? Oh, it was crazy. As soon as that tee would open up, you knew it was time to play football. The hair would stand up on the back of your neck, and it was time to go. It was a great experience for me. Talk about some of the coaches and what you learned down there, some of the techniques and all that helped you. you know, nobody gets better than Coach Foreman. You know, Coach Foreman really emphasizes basics and technique and things like that. But my defensive coordinator, Coach Chavis, really taught me how to study film, how to break down opponents to become a better football player. Right. Now, going through the – did you play all four years? Were you fortunate to play the, the fall four years? Well, you know, or? I left early as a, as a redshirt That's junior. Right. So I left early and, uh, and went to the NFL. Right. Now, how was that feeling when you got the call? It was great. You know, uh, Coach Bilicek called me. It was the 10th pick of the draft, so I was very excited. Those guys had won 18 games the previous year, so I couldn't ask for anything more. All right, now you go up there. You're going up there as a linebacker with, with some people going to be in the, in the Hall of Fame, no right. doubt. Bruce Key and Junior Seau, just to mention a couple. Right. What was that like? Would you, would you like – how did you get the, their information and how did you learn? I would, ask them, I would ask them questions, but at the same time, those guys would pull me to the side and, and kind of teach me how to be a good football player and how to be a good man. You know, the, we call it the Patriot way, you know, on and off the field, handling business, and that's what those guys taught me how to do. Well, and, and you like, I'm sure, like a sponge. I definitely was like a sponge. I would sit there and listen as much as, as possible. Now, I wouldn't say too much because those guys have been playing for 12 and 14 years. So, you know, Junior Seau is the leading tackler ever in the NFL. Right. So uh, that's a good goal to set, and <laughs> I try to follow his lead. All right. So now with, with all that going on as a, as a rookie, did you think, okay, well, I, I can – did you know you could step right in and do it? Did you have that, that feeling? Uh, I didn't know. You know, like I said, going into an organization like the Patriots who win a lot of games and uh, don't really rely too much on, on younger players, I thought I would come in and, and contribute like I could, you know, any way the coach asked me to. And uh, it just happened that I was blessed to be able to start that season and uh, go on to win defensive rookie of the year. Right. Now, talk about that because that's a, an honor that just doesn't come along. You had, I mean, rookie, you have one chance to get that, baby. <laughs> yeah, you have one chance to get in. Uh, you know, fortunately, I was surrounded by a good group of guys like we, like we talked about before, and uh, those guys really helped me along the way. Talk to me a little bit about your defensive coaches up there because I know – Belichick is the head man, right. but you had some defensive coaches that really worked on you and helped you do the techniques and the read the, the, the linemen and all right. those things. Talk a little bit about that. You know, like you said, it starts with Coach Belichick. Uh, he's a defensive-minded coach. You know, He did an excellent job just keeping me after and, and making me come to uh, workouts early and things like that. But Coach Matt, Matt Patricia really took me under his wing. You know, it was his second year coaching the linebackers and really you know, kind of kind of tutored me along the way. All right, now it's not just all on the field, is it? You have a lot. Talk about the film sessions, because a lot of people don't understand. You guys watch a lot of film. Right. You know, we go, we go. I go in at seven. I get home at about seven. So you know, twelve-hour days, and you're only on the practice field an hour and a half. So you do the math as, as much uh, film study as we do. Right. Now, when you're doing the film, what are you looking for? Are you looking for the techniques of the offensive lineman you're going to go against? What? Just looking for different tendencies, uh, the different things that the offense are doing, tips, di just different things like that. And uh, you go out and do it on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I know you've been doing it on Sunday, and uh, you, 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 you have been doing this thing since you were just a kid. Did you envision when you started where you would be today? I know you dreamed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would dream these type of things, and uh, I never envisioned that I would make it here. But, you know, hard work, you know, surrounding myself with good people and a lot of blessings really got me where I am today. All right, now, if you were to tell a youngster, what would you tell him? how to prepare for to the next level just to work hard you know outwork your outwork your opponent you know put that extra time in you know when those guys are going outside you know to run around play basketball things like that if you want to be a football player you go out and run some routes or you know go out there and tackle a dummy or something like that just work harder than the next guy just beat the, beat the other guy exactly good <laughs> enough appreciate you taking hey, time for having me. coming in stay tuned for our next guest
Welcome back. I have Tyrod Taylor with me, former Hampton great, former great up of Virginia Tech, and has been drafted by the Baltimore Ravens. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad, for having me. glad to have you. We're trying to get you in here, and, <laughs> and I know it's, you've, you've had a lot of things going on with being drafted and everything. But let's go back to when you first started. Now you started ball where everybody else is in the rec league. Yes. And talk a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, growing up in Hampton area, um, a team that I heard of from from Ronald Curry and guys like that at Hampton High was a team named uh, Hampton Tornadoes, and that's where I started out at. Uh, okay. Started when I was five years old. Only five got, years old. I only got a chance to play one game that year, and after that, uh, I started throughout the rest of the years. Um, and my dad was the head coach for. Uh, of so my time. Was you always a quarterback, or did you run the ball? What? My first, I think my first two days I was a right tackle or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like that position too much, so I had to get the ball in my hands. And since then, I've been playing quarterback. Did, did you always feel like that you could make something happen? Uh, yes, I did. Um, growing up, even playing with my cousins in the yard, I always had an uh, arm, a strong arm that could throw the ball from, from one side of the house to the other side of the house. So I felt that I could play quarterback. And, uh, I wasn't the fastest guy, fastest guy at the time, but you couldn't always touch me. So I, I think I had moves, and I always felt like I, I could make a play or I could make someone miss. So being being at, at, a, at a young age, you want to put your most athletic or the most uh, the guy with the most dynamic style at quarterback because he touches the ball the most. Right. And in in the rec league, you do that, uh, but you also had some moves. So it, it's in it's it's an instinct. Some people think it's because you have good peripheral vision, yes. which I think it helps a lot because you sometimes can see movement coming out of the side, can't you? Yes, uh, yes, sir. That's just something uh, God blessed me with. Um, of course, you train and you train, but you can't always train those type of things. Um, vision is something that I was blessed with, and uh, I, just, I use it in my game, or whether it's seeing a backside defender before even turning your head, just feeling them and, and getting away from them. Right. And see, that's an innate ability you can't coach that <laughs> exactly it's like the guy says i can't coach fast i can teach you got to be quicker but either he's fast or he's not fast yes sir all right so then you go to hampton high and, and you, you're coming in there after some great quarterbacks and ronald curry and marcus Haggins and and you're stepping in did you feel that you could do the job i mean you had your own confidence uh yes and especially the, the experience that i had uh like you said coming from ham tornadoes we always won that league, so the expectation every year was was for us to win every year, and that's how it is at Hampton High. And uh, I got the opportunity to play as a true freshman. Um, Mike Roberts, uh, the starting quarterback at the time, which was a senior, got hurt in our first scrimmage against Huguenot, and I had to come in. Maybe it was the second series, and I played well th throughout that scrimmage and ended up starting uh, starting that season for like, the first four games, and we were winning. So. Uh, just something I think Coach Smith gave me the opportunity at an early age to go out there and, and control the offense and be the leader for the team. It just carried on with me throughout the years. And sometimes it takes somebody to get hurt for you to step in. And, you know, we feel sorry for the other guy, but it gave you an opportunity. Yes. Now, when you were with the, the Tornadoes, do you remember some of the, the uh, teammates you had? Did they all go to Hampton or did they go to some other school? Uh, when A lot of those guys went to Bethel. Um, we had some guys go to Hampton, had some guys go to Heritage, but it was kind of much, uh, pretty much spread out. Okay. So then when you got to high school, you got to play against them. Oh, yeah, guys. yeah. And that's, that's, that's the fun thing, to, go, to be out in high school playing against the guys, uh, especially at JV and, and early on, because all those guys don't go on to, to play varsity, maybe 11th grade year. But especially early on, JV, 8th, 9th, and 10th grade, you're playing against guys that you competed with uh, and that you played with at a rec league level. Uh, and they knew what you could do. Oh, yeah, they did. <laughs> so they knew what they were coming up against, didn't they? <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, they, they knew the talent that I had. Like I said, I got got faster over the years. I wasn't always the fastest guy, but I always had moves, and I was quick. Uh, but I got faster over the years, and I think that just added to my game and made me more explosive. All right, now let me ask you something, because a lot of people don't believe this, but I believe, you know, you play, you a good basketball player. <laughs> did you take some of that? Carry over the the lateral movement and stuff that and the quickness you had to have in basketball. Did that help you in football? Yes, it did. It overlapped. Um, and being being in basketball all year uh, with the AAU and doing the season with, uh, with with the high school team or with the rec league team, and then carrying over the football. Some of those things you do use uh, as far as lateral movement. Uh, it's pretty much the same. So uh, I just tried to try to better myself. What was on the basketball court to to carry over on my game in the football or vice versa. Did, did, uh, it, did it ever enter your mind that maybe you might want to try basketball at the next level or if football was? Football, I always had to love football. I played basketball and I, and I really like basketball, but I think I, 
pretty much played that because I was athletic enough to play it. Um, I, I think I was a pretty good player, but I always my heart was always in football. You got your passion. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that. All right, and then you graduate, and you get recruited, and you go to Virginia Tech. And you go up there with uh, a program that is noted for their quarterbacks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you just – I mean, you walking into – a, a different level. Oh, yeah. Talk about the difference from high school. And before we go into that, talk a, a minute a bit about winning the state championships because I think that's important. Uh, yes, um, Hamden High had been going through a downtime of, as far as winning the state championship. And it was one thing uh, that the coaches told me when I first got to Hampton uh, it was if you don't leave, if you leave Hampton High without putting something in the trophy case, then you haven't, you haven't did anything in your time being at, uh, at Hampton. And that's something that I always wanted to do, whether it was through basketball or football, was to put something in the trophy case. And we was able to do that uh, playing together our 11th grade year. I don't know if you remember, we lost to Indian River the first game of the season. And everything, uh, everything just came back, and we ended up going out there and winning. Well, you know, Hampton has done that before. Lost the first game of the season and ended up winning the state championship. I mean, it's just, it, that, I, there was always a saying, if you're going to beat Hampton, get them first. Yeah, actually, hold on, let me better. see. If we didn't lose the Indian River that year. We lost to Phoebus early, midway through the season. They called my punt return back. I remember that. We lost the Indian River the following year, my, right. uh, my senior year, first That's game. That's right. Okay, I, I, could, I have trouble keeping them all straight, too. Now you go to Virginia Tech. Different level of competition. Everybody's good. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. I remember the first day of practice, uh, everything was just going so fast. The terminology was different. It was more defenses that you had to face, that you had to know. Uh, it was just, just a, a, it was a shock for me um, being coming from high school. And this is a great area of talent, but you don't see everything is not as fast. Like you said, when you get to college, everyone's good. And it's even different when you get to to the NFL, but back to college, uh, my first day, I was thrown into the fire, and I went out there and made some plays. I think I impressed the coaches. Um, I was on the scout team for maybe a week before they wanted to try me with the varsity team. And I went in there, like I said, made some plays. Didn't know everything I needed to know, but I was making plays and, and moving the chain. So uh, they caught the coach's eye, and they wanted to give me a shot. Um, my freshman year against LSU, uh, we lost to East Carolina, or didn't play well against East Carolina in the first game, and we, right. were, we were having a, a hard time against LSU the second game in the season, and they put me in there, and I, I went out there and made some plays. Ended up still losing. Uh, I scored scored the only touchdown. Uh, still a loss, but it was a confidence builder for me to, to let me know, because that was the number one defense at the time, to let me know that I could go out there and play and compete with these guys. It was it was a confidence builder, and I just built on from that game. I wanted to, to never take any steps backwards from that game. You kept going forward. Yes, sir. Talk about reading defense. This uh, is something you hear about. Oh, yeah. But you had to do it. Yes, I had to do it. And I uh, had to learn quick, uh, especially against Coach Foster's defense in practice every day. And I think that's that's what helped me a lot. Uh, of course, watching film and knowing our offense, uh, of course, helped the process. But going against Coach Foster, he wanted to make it as hard as possible each and every week for uh, us to better his defense. Right. And uh, he, he does a good job of, of disguising coverages. And, and that's where – and that's why I kind of picked up on it. And it kind of it started to slow down to me. Uh, I would say that the beginning of my sophomore year, my freshman year, I was out there just playing and having fun and, and doing with the coaches. They didn't open the, the full playbook to the end of the season. But the sophomore year, they gave me the full playbook. And uh, we went out there and made some plays. But things started really coming along throughout the end of my sophomore on to the junior and senior year. I still played well my freshman year, but you could see the progress from my sophomore on through the senior. Right, I could, and I could see watching you play that you, you were getting better, and you, it looked like to me you had more confidence. Yes, sir. And it was a, it was a, it was a different, it was a different. Uh, I had to get used to, to a new set of receivers, and they had to get used to me uh, coming in there. My, fr my freshman year had four senior receivers, uh, guys that went on to play to the NFL. So my sophomore year, we brought in four new guys, and I had to get used to them. Like I said, they had to get used to me. So it was just a time of us getting our timing together and getting comfortable with each other and going out there and playing and making plays. Well, I know uh, you're, you've been drafted. You're going up to the Baltimore Ravens. Yes, sir. And that's... Another experience where we can't talk about you hadn't even got there yet. Yeah, but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to come up and see you and see if we can't uh, see how you're doing up there. Yes, sir. Well, listen, I appreciate you stopping by and, and seeing us. Oh, no problem. This is like home right here. <laughs> it is home. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for watching LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest today. I'm your host, Bob Henson. Until next time.